Frida Kahlo, written and illustrated by Mike Venezia. Frida Kahlo was one of the greatest Mexican artists of the 20th century. She was born in Coyacan, Mexico in 1907. Frida grew up during the Mexican Revolution, an event that influenced her life and changed the art of Mexico forever. Some of Frida's most famous works are self-portraits. In many of them, she shows herself surrounded by things that were important to her. Frida especially liked to paint flowers, plants, forests, animals, costumes, jewelry, and ancient gods and idols that were found only in Mexico. Frida often showed unpleasant things that happened during her life. These paintings are sometimes shocking to people, but Frida needed to paint them to help her get through some hard times. The painting shown on the next page, Without Hope, was done after a serious illness. Frida had grown weak and had no appetite. Her doctors wanted her to eat lots of strained foods. Frida was disgusted by the idea of being forced to eat and showed how she felt about this in her painting. Frida painted most of these disturbing pictures for herself. She was surprised when anyone else showed any interest in them. Frida Kahlo went through a lot of pain and suffering during her life. When she was five years old, she caught a serious disease called polio. She got better, but the disease left her right leg thin and weak. To help improve her leg, Frida's parents got her to do lots of physical activities, including soccer, swimming, bicycling, and even boxing. Nothing seemed to help, though. Kids in the neighborhood started calling her Frida Peg Leg. Frida wore long dresses and pants to hide her leg. She never wanted anyone to know she was different or feel sorry for her or make fun of her. Frida Kahlo was very curious as a child. She especially wanted to know about nature and science. Her father thought this was great and encouraged Frida to learn as much as she could. Frida was always bringing home plants, rocks, insects, and small animals to study. Mr. Kahlo was a professional photographer and an amateur artist. He was also curious about all kinds of things. He taught his daughter about ancient Mexican art and architecture. Mr. Kahlo showed Frida how to use a camera and how to retouch and color photographs. These things came in handy later when Frida herself became an artist. Frida attended one of the best high schools in the country. It was located right in the middle of Mexico City. In high school, Frida learned how important the Mexican Revolution was to the people of her country. Before the revolution, thousands of people were treated like slaves. They were very poor and uneducated, and most worked on farms all day long. A few greedy government officials and farm owners kept all the money for themselves. In 1910, the Mexican people, with leaders like Pancho Villa and Emiliano Zapata, rebelled against the Mexican government and won the right to make life fair for everyone in Mexico. One of the first things the new Mexican government did was hire artists to paint large scenes on the walls of public buildings for everyone to see. These paintings, called murals, showed the history of Mexico. They were meant to help uneducated people understand their past, make them proud of their country, and give them hope for the future. The most famous mural artists were David Siqueiros, Jose Orozco, and Diego Rivera. These painters were inspired by the art and colors of ancient Mexican civilizations. They were also influenced by Mexican popular art, like the lively prints of Jose Posada. They purposely kept away from European-influenced art, which was the accepted style of art before the Mexican Revolution. When Frida was 14 years old, Diego Rivera came to her school to paint one of his murals. In high school, Frida was known as a troublemaker. She made herself in a, a pain in the neck to her teachers and anyone else in authority, including the famous Diego. Frida played tricks on Diego and called out names like Old Fatso 
while he was trying to work. Frida wasn't all that interested in art until a very bad thing happened to her. One day, on the way home from school, the bus she was riding got into a terrible accident. Some people were even killed. Frida was badly injured and had to spend months in bed. Her bones never really healed properly. She had lots of pain and had to have many operations during her life. It was at this time that Frida decided to take up art. She was bored lying in bed and needed something to do. Frida borrowed her father's paints and brushes. Her mother had a special easel made so Frida could work while she was lying on her back. Frida started by painting portraits of her friends, family, and the subject she knew best, herself. At first, Frida was her own teacher. She studied her father's art books and copied the paintings of great European artists like Botticelli and Modigliani. But soon, just like the Mexican mural artists, Frida became more interested in the folk art of her own country. Frida loved the energy of these works of art and the simple stories they told. These paintings and prints seemed filled with the magic that many people in Mexico felt was a real part of their everyday lives. She found a mysterious power in religious paintings and ancient Mexican Indian art. Frida began to include in her own paintings the things that she discovered in Mexican folk art. Frida enjoyed painting. It made her feel better. Soon, she felt well enough to get around again. Frida made up her mind then never to let her pain and injuries get in the way of having fun. She kept working on her paintings, got together with friends, and went to lots of parties. At one party, she was introduced to Diego Rivera. He didn't remember Frida because she was grown up now and looked much different. Diego did remember her, though, a few days later, when she came to see him while he was painting one of his murals. Frida wanted to show Diego some of her artwork to see what he thought. Even though Frida had teased him years before, she'd always been fascinated by Diego and respected his talent. Diego thought Frida's artwork was great. Now that Frida was grown up, he thought she was great too. Frida invited Diego to her home to look at other paintings she had done. <clears throat> Diego visited the Kahlo home often. He and Frida got to know each other well and started dating. After a while, they fell in love. Even though Diego was more than 20 years older than Frida, they decided to get married. Diego always encouraged Frida with her art. He was proud of his talented wife. Frida learned a lot from Diego, and he turned out to be an excellent art teacher. Now, Frida Kahlo was the wife of one of the most famous artists in the world. At first, it was fine with her to just take care of her husband. Frida enjoyed being with Diego every day while he worked, but she wasn't doing much of her own art. In the 1930s, Diego was asked to paint murals in the United States. Diego and Frida traveled there often and were admired wherever they went. They looked great together and were a lot of fun to be around. Frida and Diego were always being invited to the parties of rich and famous people. Things didn't always go well between Diego and Frida, though. They often had serious arguments. One disagreement was over how much time they were spending in the United States. Diego loved the modern American cities, but Frida didn't enjoy being there at all. She was homesick and wanted to get back to Mexico. Frida did the painting on the next page to show her feelings about the United States. She painted an overcrowded New York City filled with factories, garbage, and pollution. There's no sign of Frida in this picture. She's probably returned to Mexico, leaving only her dress behind. Sometimes, after a serious argument, Frida and Diego would live apart from each other. During these times, Frida painted more often and created some of her best works. Frida Kahlo painted her real feelings in a way that had never been seen before. As time went on, her work started to become as well-known as her famous husband's. Frida was able to show her happiness, her disappointment, 
paint. Her paintings are filled with Mexican colors and images that could have only come from someone who loved their country as much as she did. Frida Kahlo's health was a serious problem throughout her life. She died in 1954. But early on, Frida had decided to enjoy life as much as possible. She always spent a lot of time fixing her hair and dressing in beautiful costumes. Some of her friends said that when she was finished, she had become almost a piece of art herself. 